In art, there is a technique called perspective. Perspective consists of a 3D image being represented in a two-dimensional surface, which can be a piece of paper or a canvas. Perspective is prominently known for portraying realistic and natural images and is shown from the observer's eye. There are actually different types of perspective. I found that one-point per perspectives are more common than most other perspectives. One-point perspe perspectives consist of that one straight horizontal line. As you go farther, the figures in the respective art get smaller. This is most common in railroads, roads, streets, or in buildings. Two-point perspectives are a bit more broad. It can be shown as the corner of a building in two pathways. That would be a two-point perspective. Of course, there are many perspectives, but I personally found one-point perspectives to be the most common and the most effective. I came across a one-point perspective when I visited the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I was standing on top of the staircase and looking straight ahead. It seemed like everything had been divided in half. There were an equal amount of pillars on both sides and I was staring at one point. So, the camera essentially caught my view of the eye. I held it right in front of my eyes and took a picture. Therefore, this is an image with a one point perspective. Now, of course, perspective is in art as well, which consists of paintings and not specifically photographs. Let's take, for instance, this painting titled Fantasy of a Palace by Van Dellen and Janssens. Here we see prominent characteristics of perspective art. It's as if the painter is looking straight down and painting whatever is seen based on the view of the eye. There's a balance on each side, five pillars on both sides with the dome on top. Then as we go farther away, the figures in the paintings become smaller and smaller. This is quite similar to what I saw at the Met. There are, these are all characteristics of perspective art, but why is it used? Why is it even important? What purpose does it serve in the art? Well. First and foremost, perspective allows there to be depth, more meaning and life into the painting. See, when I saw the photo, I took one of the empty train, which showed a one-point perspective. I was a bit taken aback. See, it's just an empty train, but there's so much depth. It's like as if I'm being sucked into the image, almost as if I'm present, standing there in the empty train, staring right at the door. That might have been. That might have to do with the fact that the perspective paintings show what the observer is seeing. Nothing is interfered, nothing is maximized or minimized or changed in any way. It's exactly what the observer sees. So in that sense, there's more depth and more relation between the art and the person viewing the art, hence creating more of an effect. During the Renaissance, perspective may have been used to emphasize the meaning of the painting with the idea that there is more depth. Now let's take, for example, The Last Supper painted by Leonardo da Vinci. We all know this painting is immensely famous but it actually incorporates perspective, and that might be why it's so famous. He undoubtedly implemented perspective in this painting, and the person viewing it can feel like he's present with Jesus and everyone else at the dinner table. That is the power of perspective. Here are more examples of perspective art from the Renaissance. 